Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Uh, welcome to Drinking Bros. It's a lot of energy. I've, I've got a lot of energy today. I drank uh, some really good coffee this morning. Did you? Yeah. That's great. That was really good. I, w- I wonder if our guests drank any coffee. Joe Biggs, how are you? I'm doing fan-fucking-tastic. How's it going? Man, it's, it's going right as rain over here, my man. It's strange, though, because we just had Alex Jones on the show, and yeah. now you're on the show, and you used to work with Alex Jones. Yeah, for quite some time, and now I'm over with uh, Gavin McGinnis now at freespeech.tv. Are you really? Damn straight. No shit. Dude, we, we almost had Gavin on the show a, a few times, but he went, he went through some problems when I was chatting with him. Was it his mustache? Definitely was not his mustache. Oh. He's got a strong mustache game. Yeah, it's, strong beard game over It's there. impressive. I like the mustache. But uh, I, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because Gavin McGinnis is the head of the Proud Boys, correct? Uh, he used to be. He stepped down. I'm actually at the uh, new head of the Proud Boys house. He lives in Cuban. Uh, <laughs> he in lives where? in Miami. He's Cuban. <laughs> oh, he's Cuban. I was like, man, did you guys go full on <laughs> down to Cuba? You just hiked it on down to Cuba. That's hilarious. <laughs> Um, no, so we, we try to have uh, Gavin on the show, and during that period of time, uh, the feds were looking into him uh, for the Proud Boys being a possible terrorist group. Hmm. Uh, yeah, they're always, they're always uh, calling me all the time, the FBI. A Are they te- really? A terrorist group? Yes. What? Yeah, it's, just, well, it's the same shit, that, uh, like with us going after Antifa, you know, like they actually have a legitimate reason to be labeled a domestic terrorist organization. These are just the left-wing assholes just trying to troll us. Yeah, because, I mean, look, they, shut, they effectively shut him down, I feel like, um, you know, yeah. as, as far as being a member of the Proud Boys and all that other stuff, uh, he came out and, and admitted some things that I don't know. Look, if they had forced his hand on some things, uh, you would know better than I, obviously, but uh, he is no longer affiliated with the Proud Boys whatsoever, correct? Yep. Okay. Exactly. And then wh- and what do you guys do on your show? Oh, so my show is just me. It's like, you know, the things I've done at, at InfoWars or other networks I've done in the past, uh, just comedy, some politics and shit like that. Uh, I'll bring on some funny guests, friends of mine that I've known throughout, uh, you know, my lifetime uh, and then other, you know, known people, you know, just shoot the shit for a while. Yeah. And uh, like, what do you do with the Proud Boys then? Because I see you at a lot of Antifa protests. Yeah. So what I do is I like to organize events to kind of riled them up. I want to see them come out and show their true colors on a national and global stage. And when I held the event in Portland recently, back in August, Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to do that. I worked with the FBI, I worked with local law enforcement, and I got excessively crazy online. It was part of the plan, and it got to a point where I got banned from everything. I am probably one of the most banned people in the world. I got kicked out of Chase. I got kicked off Tinder, fucking Bumble. I can't use Lyft or Uber. I don't have Facebook. I don't have any of this stuff, and I have to use a VPN now. Uh, so right now, Instagram thinks I'm like a 16-year-old little, sixteen year old girl in Costa Rica, and that's how I have an account up right now. You're well, kidding. But, no. Nah. So, so I got banned from all this stuff because I... The part of the plan was to bait Antifa to a point where they just became belligerent and they really thought that we were going to come out there and just beat them into oblivion. Uh, so when we showed up, they were so riled up. The cops thought that there was just going to be an epic battle. The FBI was like, Biggs, please, like, we don't want bloodshed. Like, we don't want any of these crazy stuff. And then we get there that morning and we kept everybody not in the know. Like, even 90, 98% of the people that attended my rally had no idea they were going to get a curveball the morning of. And the morning of, we told everybody, look, we're going to march over this infamous bridge into this waterfront park in portland we're going to plant an american flag because this place is turning into a commie shithole we're going to say a prayer for these assholes we're going to go back into washington state where we have a huge party already planned uh and that's where we're going to actually have our rally at so we baited everybody into thinking this was going to happen we show up plant a flag antifa goes ape shit they're screaming they're you know chasing people beating up innocent people and the world's watching even president donald trump said i'm watching portland today so we got global attention on an organization that runs around and beats the shit out of people for no reason they make chemical compounds one guy got caught with a gun uh one of the uh, vehicles leaving was ours a van um people are throwing hammers through the window and hitting individuals and uh shooting bear spray into the broken glass um people got cut up the lady that uh that drove the bus was covered in blood when she got to our side um 
But at the end of the day, no one was really majorly injured on our side. Um, no one went to jail on our side. Antifa had numerous people arrested, and they were all caught with weapons. So it was a victory uh, optically and, you know, in real time. Let me, let me ask you this. How do you uh, respond to people who call Proud Boys like a neo-fascist organization? Like, what's your response to that? They're, they're fucking idiots because they haven't actually taken the time to hang out with us. I mean, I mean, we have white people, black people, we have gay people, we have transgendered people in the group. Um, it's a, pretty much a group for anybody if you believe in the, the Western civilization is the best and America is the best and you want to put America first, hey, come on. Well, what, so, yeah, Western civilization is pretty rad, but, uh, I mean, shit, Asia's doing pretty decent too, right? South Korea? They're, well, not, they're knocking it out. Let's, uh, South Korea. Korea. Let's, let's look at Hong Kong. Oh, uh, Hong Kong's yeah, but fucked. I mean, yeah, they, they wish they had guns right now, right? <laughs> yeah. That's not very American of me to go, yay, China, yay, all these other places. I just, you know, I'm going to go from my side. No, oh, no sure. sure yeah. I, look, I get it. So, uh, look, how crazy was the Portland thing? Because on the news... Uh, you know, we see snippets, we see little clips online and things like that. I, I, I saw the thing you were talking about, about throwing hammers at the bus. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember seeing that as well. How crazy is it in, like, being on the ground in Portland during a... This one, that this one wasn't crazy because we, we planned strategically for months how we were going to do this. The same, myself and three or four other guys, we did phone calls every two days. And we had guys who lived there. We went out and flew out there ahead of time. We did our homework, our research. We knew every little corridor, every little alleyway where people could do stuff. We know all the areas where they hang out. So we put in a lot of time and effort to do this. So no one on our side saw anything crazy except for the last bus that was trying to get out of there. Um, other than that, we all watched it on TV. That was the whole plan, to sit there and watch and, and bait Bayer Ted Wheeler, who's a punk-ass bitch, and bait Antifa, and, and for the cops to be scared to think that we're going to have this march where we went through all these Antifa strongholds, and they were begging us the whole time because we get there like a week early. They're like, please don't do this. Please don't do this. And we would go and meet with them and talk to them on the phone. We had a, a private liaison that we discussed with daily on you know if plans change, what we're doing. So we kept them thinking that that was going to be it. It was going to be hell. Uh, and the whole point was just for us to pull out and sit back and get drunk at a party and watch TV and watch it all fall down. And it worked. So it's the first time I've ever had a plan go perfectly. For, for the common man out there who, who doesn't really necessarily know what, what Antifa is, can you describe it for the audience of, of what, what this group is composed of and, and who they actually are? Well, these people are brainwashed to think that there's like literally Nazis everywhere. It, it, you know, the, the, the media, the mainstream media has helped portray this picture and paint this picture that that anyone who supports Donald Trump is literally a Nazi because he's literally Hitler. Because you always hear that, literally Hitler. Can you, literally imagine, can you imagine being a Holocaust survivor and hearing somebody say that a dude that dislikes America is, is a Hitler? Nazi? Yeah. Like, holy shit, that's got to be about the most offensive thing you can say, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're, if, you're, if you're patriotic, you know, and, and you love your country and you want to be an American nationalist, which is just saying, hey, I believe in this country. I think we should put our issues first. We should take care of our people. We should secure our borders, our language, our culture. Um, then that makes you a, a Nazi. I mean, shit. I mean, that's just whatever. But, you know, it, I don't get upset about it anymore. I don't care what people call me. I don't care what articles say. I don't care when you Google my name, it comes up and says this shit because I just really don't care. I've got better things to do. There's beer out there. There's women out there. There's motorcycles to ride. There's waves to surf. I don't give a shit. You know, so, you know, Antifa, they're basically basement dwelling uncultured swine um who eat cheetos all day and masturbate to anime i mean that's it they're just losers they don't know incels, what they're fighting yeah. for yeah, yeah do, they, do people they have, out there know what incel means involuntarily celibate that's what it means just just for the audience that's what I, incel I, a lot means. of their neck beards they, I, they live in their mom's basement and fucking pound off all day with Cheeto dust. <laughs> and look, Cheeto dust is going to create some viscosity when you're pounding off, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's it's, it's going to get in there. Okay? It's very sandish. It's it is, like, yeah. It's like masturbating on a, on a beach a little bit. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, it would exfoliate your dick really nicely. Eh, that'd be nice. That'd be a nice thing. It's, yeah. it's, 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 like the, it's like the highest level of angry uh, lesbian LGBT, you know, member with the pink and the hair and all that shit. Uh, the extra rolls of fat, and then you have the guys who pretend that they're male feminists, but they're actually um, closet rapists. They haven't really gone that far yet, but some of them are doing. When you, when you talk to a lot of these feminist chicks, these guys try to hang around them and, and 
uh, Antifa, and all they try to do is act like, oh, I'm so woke, oh, look at me, I'm uh, Black Lives Matter, yeah. hey, well, let's go hook up. They're like, no, and then they get all violent with them. And every time I hear these girls tell those stories, it's the same thing. But they sit around and, you know, they want to bitch about Brett Kavanaugh and all that crap. So b- basically it's it's kind of like the far, far left, essentially, is what, what the gist is yeah. of, of Antifa. Well, they... Everybody says, no, they're the real fascists. No, let's call them what they are. They're not fascists at all, Antifa. They are fucking communists. That's what they are. I, I, you see nothing but communist flags at these rallies. They love and worship Mao. But for some reason, you know, Donald Trump has this huge body count like Mao and all these other people, apparently. Man, and would you say that it's a fair assessment that, that Antifa got started after Trump got elected? Because before he did, I, I never heard of this group at all. And I don't know if it existed. They, they, I, I they've think been they've around been there Seattle for a while. And, and Portland for a while. Yeah. Oh, they have. Well, yeah, yeah. They've, they've been there for a while. But I think this escalated it because the media lost this. The media projected that Hillary Clinton was going to win. She had a 99% chance of winning. Mm-hmm. And Donald Trump had no chance what, you know, whatsoever. And really what you're seeing is, you know, you've had these, the dark ages. Right now it's like the... How, do, how would you even label this time? It's like the like the biggest, you know, uh, when you lose something, you pitch a fit, you know, like that. Like that, that's what's going on right now. It's just this huge, like you know, uh, butt hurt going on, and everyone's just mad, you know. So they're doing everything they can to try to legitimize their emotionals, their their emotions, and why they feel this way. So they're having this big just shit storm and, and showing off every day, uh, and that's why they've gotten so pissed off because they believed it. They saw the headlines, they saw all this stuff, and they were told that Donald Trump would not be president. He's not legitimate. He's not a real contender, um, and they believe that. But everything and now they're just you know running around acting like a bunch of dumbasses man yeah because I, I hadn't heard about this before donald trump took office mm-hmm. i don't think they really gained any national attention until uh some of these protests started to break out after the election was over i didn't know this was a thing before then no most of it started in uh in the fucking outdoor communities mm-hmm. the street people right and in, in seattle and portland so they're like uh so when you say street people, are you talking I, about homeless people? I'm, I'm talking about, well, they're, vol- they're, they're voluntarily homeless, yeah. Okay. And uh, one of their main things is they want to destroy capitalism. They, don't, they think that we should be living in communes and all this other bullshit. Okay. Uh, and they think that uh, aggressive capitalism is tantamount to fascism. They think that, that patriotism and, uh, you know, caring more about your own country than everybody else is, is a form of that as well. And they also associate that's it, racist. Yeah, they also associate it with white nationalism. Like if you're America first, that's white nationalism. When the, when's the last time that America was a white country? Like does anybody think of it that, like that anymore? We're just a country of a bunch of different people. I thought that was the whole fucking point. Yeah. So I, if you're America first, aren't you? You got to be American, like Italian American first, Irish American first, but also African yeah, American America first. Fucking, like there's a lot of different people here, motherfucker. Yeah. So I, I guess I mean, then if think about like my group. We yeah. have we have Filipinos, we have Puerto Ricans, we got Cubans, we got Black, we, we got, got Native, Native Americans, Americans. You know, we, we got, got fucking purple, purple people. We, we got, got you know, we got all kinds of shit. Like America, you have grimace. You have grimace. That's it. Yeah, yeah, grimace is yeah, a yeah we time exactly. Guy, yeah. yeah, that's probably me because I'm always the grumpy motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, I, I let's see. I'm, I'm trying to think back to when I, I first saw something like this, and I guess it was probably Occupy Wall Street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, and that was when that, that was the first like the first time I had seen something in public where I was just like, oh, people are protesting and sitting in for something that is, yeah, not going to change or do anything. Well, no, they did make actually Occupy forced Bank of America. They so they did a protest against Bank of America america specifically right okay and over a, the course of a week uh people withdrew something like 65 billion dollars out of bank of america really put it into different banks yep okay and it was because of the way they handled their bailout so that was the pre- that was the the precipitating factor for our occupy wall street it was the wall street bailouts and then the second part was basically the coke brothers if you don't know about coke industries and how mm-hmm. corrupt those assholes are Probably should go look into that. Well, there's only one left now. The other one just died. Good so. for him. Uh, Good. <laughs> he, he passed away. So with you, and I asked Alex Jones this question, um, when did you find out you were banned from everything? Was it just all at once in the middle of the night? Uh, or, or was this slowly built up over time? So it, it, there's different ways that it goes down. So like with Antifa, all right, you have these. You have big tech censorship, right? And then mm-hmm. they came out with this new, uh, what was it, terms and services, where they said they're not going to monitor. Not, they're going to monitor not only your online persona and the things you say, but also monitor your outside of their network. You know, 
activities and things like that. So in my opinion, to be quite honestly, I think that's kind of like what Antifa does for these big tech guys, because most of these guys at Twitter and Facebook are pro Antifa and shit like that. Um, so they send these mass mobs of people to go and report things on accounts. I had a, a, a picture taken down of my daughter said that it violated their terms and services as hate speech. Uh, my child is half Guyanese. My ex-wife is from Guyana, from Georgetown. Uh, don't drink the Kuwait area. So, uh, but my mixed baby, that was a, a hate speech. So it started with that. So that picture got hit. And then they hit another one, which was a picture of me and some of my buddies. And then another one, a picture of my truck, my motorcycle. They didn't care. They just mass reported all these photos really quick. Then the algorithm picks that up and the account got shut down. Then it moved over to Facebook. Same thing. Random posts. This happened like a, a day later. All these random posts got uh, reported. They said they're going to get taken down. Any more come up, you're deleted, boom, banned, gone. Uh, and they just slowly happen across the board. Then I got an email from Venmo and PayPal in the same morning at 7.35 and went another at 8.45 saying I've been banned from each of those. Uh, and then following that, uh, what was it, uh, Chase Bank. Um, then uh, how, how, what, was Chase, what was Chase's explanation behind that? Like how do you delete they, someone's they, bank account? They locked it. Uh, they told me I could go to a local, like brick and mortar, you know, spot, mm -hmm. and go withdraw my money, and that was it. And I went and did it. Wow. And, 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 but and but I also when you walk in also, though and talk to the branch manager, what do you what do you say then? Hey man, I got this. She email. said. Yeah, she said that she doesn't have access to because it's too high. So they actually had to give me the Chase Executive Bank number, which is their main headquarters. And for two or three days, I just went on like this. You know, I don't, I don't ever like playing the vet card because I think it's a piece of shit move. But I did it just to kind of troll them and fuck with them. Uh, and I made them feel super bad. It's like, you know, I fought for this fucking country. You guys are fucking pieces of shit. Chase Bank hates veterans. And then I got other media to kind of push that to help it out. So Chase actually does come back and go, we'll give you your bank. And I told him to go fuck off. And I went somewhere else. Man, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, so where can people find you now then? Like, what, what do you do when you're banned from all these platforms? Where do you go? Well, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> I bet. At this point, because I have to uh, pay for all these different subscriptions, like these VPN things and all that to hide my IP on my phone, my computers, my internet at the house. I've got to hide all this shit because I constantly have people looking for me too. You know, you got a bunch of those psychotic left nut jobs out there, which I kind of wish they would knock on my door. I think that would be amazing. Like my house <laughs> is like a Gitmo torture chamber. You got expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros by any chance. Yeah, That's one of our out. sponsors. <laughs> Hey, maybe I can go to them now. Yeah, you can sign up for the entire year, get three months for free. It's only seven bucks a month at expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. It's one of our sponsors, no obviously. Ah, you're welcome for that. Uh, as soon as you brought it up, I was like, eh, might as well throw it in. <laughs> We're here. We're partying today. Um, yeah, so I've done that. I've set up all these things, and now I have uh, Facebook you just can't get around. I don't know how Facebook has gotten so good at detecting me mm -hmm. like i literally made all this thing i use proton mail i created this new web uh you know email address and shit i, I got a fucking a flip phone thing one of those burner phones did all this shit i was like all right i'm gonna get facebook and then they go as soon as i do it they somehow find out that i'm attached to this then they ask immediately for my phone number so i give them the new flip phone phone number then they somehow figured out that it's attached to me or somehow they go, well, we're locking your account due to some suspicious activity. We need to see you take a picture right now in real time. So I take a picture of my roommate. They go, nope, that's not the right picture. Let's get a picture of your photo ID, your driver's license. Really? <laughs> so there's, there's, there's no way around it. But Instagram I was able to get. It was it took some time. So I do have an Instagram. It's A-N-T-I-C-O-M-3, anti-com, anti-communist, uh, and the number three. Um, well, well, I, I guess, guess I just kind of gave that, that over a long yeah, podcast. Yeah, I mean, that'll probably be gone. You also Fuck just gave years. it out to 6.1 million. So <laughs> sure, that'll be well, gone. Well, hey, make sure you guys all hours. follow me. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? <laughs> and then you can go to freespeech.tv. It's me, Gavin McGinnis, Milo, that little, uh, that Soph chick. She's like 16 years old or something. Yeah, yeah, That does all those videos. She got her YouTube channel taken down. We've got some other big names uh, coming aboard. I'm actually getting ready to go... Uh, to a yacht party with Don Jr. and Sarah Huckabee Sanders in Miami in two weeks, and we'll be out there for freespeech.tv there. Did you happen to see uh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard's new piece that she posted on her Instagram uh, about how no. Google pulled her ad account in the middle of the first debate when she was the most searched candidate on the left? Like, they, they shut her ad account down for that whole time. 
And I wouldn't doubt it. So she, I, I mean, out of go ahead. No, I, out, out of all of them on the left, she's the one that makes the most sense on some things. Yeah, you know, like the most like tolerable. Like yeah. I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that she says, but she's at least the the one that seems concerned about America in general, like left and right, not just so biased on one side. Yeah, no, she's uh, you know, look, you're never gonna agree with anybody on everything. No, but uh, she's she's the only person that has any fucking sense over there. Obviously, of course, she's a fucking military veteran. Um, that actually did shit, not like Buddha's. I don't know what he did. He was like an intel guy. Uh, you know, I, look, I, she's out now. Yeah. She's out of the election. Yep. There's a rumor that Buttigieg is going to be gone very soon. Yeah, uh, he's the, he has no chance. Yeah, we're, we're kind of getting down to the final four here. Um, what are you expecting is going to happen? Well, let's talk about the impeachment first. What, what do you think is going to be the end result of these, this in, the impeachment inquiry that's currently going on in uh, Congress? I don't really think much is going to happen in general at all. I mean... Look, <laughs> it, it, it's the he grabbed him by the pussy. Then it was Amarosa's tapes where he says the N word. We never saw any of that stuff. You know, it's just been one thing after the other. They just keep swinging. They won't drown. They won't go down. They won't accept defeat. At this point in time, it's just comical to me. You know, it, it just shows how desperate they are. Um, and I think most Americans kind of see that. It's kind of pathetic, you know, really. You know, the big question is, is not now what happens. It's what happens in eight years. After Trump leaves, that's the big, you know, concern because, you know, typically we're not going to go right again. It's going to go left the next time more than likely. And that's kind of scary because we have a lot of up and coming congresswomen that are, you know, let's be honest, batshit crazy. So that's kind of where I'm more concerned about is the eight years down the road, not really the next four. So, so you're all in on tr like Trump wins in a landslide for this. Next oh, yeah. I mean, it's the time. same thing. They're, they're, they're already doing the same polls. Polls are for strippers. Come on. Let's let's be honest. Yeah, look, I. It feels to me like they're it, with this thing. And Dan and I had talked about this on, yeah. on uh, fake news last week was uh, drinking Bros fake news that the Democrats just decided, hey, man, we don't have a candidate that's strong enough. Let's go all in on the impeachment thing. Does it, does it feel the same way to you? Yeah, I mean, they don't have anybody at all. No one's like really likable. I mean, you know, you've already got someone who's, you know, one six or what is it? One one thousandth, you know, fucking Indian lied about it. Uh, and then some people are still willing to go for it. You know, there's this world's insane. I mean, we've got a white lady who claims she's black and people are just now accepting it. You know, it's I, I, at this point in time, I can't even it's hard to make any call. I mean, we've gone up is down, down is up, right is left. You know, blue is green. But this left side, I mean, it's just I, I, it's hard to make any kind of like actual rational, um, you know, call on anything because there's nothing really rational happening anymore. Yeah, I mean, it, look, and the news is cycling in and out so fast that it feels like uh, it's, it feels like that the impeachment thing was a year ago. Like, yeah. like nothing has gone on no. in the last few days. The last yeah, I read the Kavanaugh thing was like eight years ago. I know. I know. I, the last thing I read with the the impeachment thing is, is you know, today the, the, the Democrats are hoping to wrap this up by the end of the year. <laughs> and it's like, man, you've one no shot at that Two, No, uh, it doesn't work on your election cycle. So it, it almost feels less than a week in that they already feel like, oh, this was the wrong move. Yep. Well, it's funny because Biden, they're like, well, Biden comes out and he goes, I've got a real plan on how to fix a country. Where the fuck you been the last 50 years, dude? Yeah. <laughs> what have you been in politics? Like, why didn't you, why didn't you implement that thing a long time that ago, buddy? never had a real job in his fucking life. <laughs> yeah, well, no. he was never president either. And we'll, look, we'll see what. Thank God. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what shakes out. <laughs> Who do you think gets the nomination out of that side? It's still going to either be him or probably Warren. But I, I, at the end of the day, you know, we've kind of seen that they don't really have no plan. They have no direction for anything. At least Trump is saying things like he's got a plan for stuff and he's done some stuff. You know, so, I mean, that gives him a boost there. And plus, he's just way more likable. Like, a, look at those cringe-ass videos that Elizabeth Warren makes where she's trying to like, ooh, look at me, I'm drinking a beer. And she looks at her husband, you want a beer? And he's like, no, bitch. Yeah. You know, or like, trying to act cool. Like, hey, I'm hanging out with these girls on a train. You know, fuck off, who cares? That's yeah. not cool. Like, like, like I take public transportation. Jump off a plane. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm a real does, American. Biden does the same, hey, doesn't he? Doesn't he take a do like a train? fat line of coke and go base jump in fucking Sweden or some shit? You know, like yeah, then. get get in a fight at a fucking bar at midnight. That's what real yeah. Americans do. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Cut, get, get your girlfriend. Cut parts of your body and go swimming in the ocean, then beat a shark up, <laughs> pussy. Come on. <laughs> uh, all right, I want to I want to fire some questions at you here. Uh, you can tell me if this is true or false, right? Because 
you kind of made headlines right around the Ferguson time, right? Um, yeah. That was that was kind of the first time that Joe Biggs kind of blew up uh, in in the in the United States, I would say, right? Yeah, we because we, we we kind of like we were the first ones to take these cell phones and then use these live stream things that usually get used for like dumb family shit. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, my kids playing soccer, you know, and then we kind of made it as a way to like do live breaking news and we're able to beat out networks as far as, you know, viewers and things like that. So we kind of made history during that time. It was pretty cool. Yeah. So was it true that a, a, a cop threatened to kill you during that protest at Ferguson? It was, there was me and another camera guy side by side and he was yelling and uh, he pointed a shotgun right at us. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's real. Yes. Holy shit! What happened to the officer? Ball dude. Uh, apparently, he got fired. Now that I saw. Okay, and, and what? I don't. Why, I mean, why was he I mean, threatening to shoot you got... just because of a camera? I think he was probably scared shitless because there's all kinds of shit going on. You've got gang bangers throwing bottles. Uh, you got people popping off rounds here and there. You got buildings on fire. There's tear gas going everywhere. You know, this is a cop who lived in fucking Ferguson, Missouri. He's probably never seen anything like that. You know, that's probably been the extent um, of the shit he's been in. So he's probably nervous as fuck, to be honest. How, how, I, mean, I don't blame how, the guy. How crazy was it actually being in the middle of that? Because, I, look, I remember I, this, and it, you seem like the only white guy there for some reason. Yeah. Like, <laughs> was, was that is it real or not? Because I, I saw some yeah. of the, the footage on YouTube. Um, it was fucking intense, man. Like, you know, when I got out of the Army, I was like, I got to find a job that's going to get me to that level of adrenaline again. And my first, you know, deployment with InfoWars, so sort to of say, or mission or, you know, whatever you want to call that fucking shit, was to go to Ferguson. And I, here I am chasing all this shit. There's rounds going off. People are fucking stabbing goddamn fire uh, hoses and shit so they can't put out fires if McDonald's blowing up. You know, cars are on fire and shit. You know, people are stealing wigs and stuff. I mean, it was intense, man. So I was like, I had a blast, to be honest. I was like, Alex, I don't want to leave. I stayed with it for like two months. Did you say stealing wigs? Yeah. yeah. You know, like, they, they break into the cricket store and sell the, the, the phones. And the next door, they go to the wig store. And they were, you see dudes running out with, like, handfuls of goddamn wigs running down the street. Those things are expensive, I guess. Yeah, what, what's a dude going to do with those wigs? Well, you know what he's going to do. Sell them to some lady? Nah. Uh, <laughs> or get... Or, Become a lady. There's a corner wig sales. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Yeah. Hey. He's, he's wearing a fucking trench coat. He opens it up. Hey, in his hey. wigs. he's looking at the market right now. <laughs> he's looking at the market right now. There's no wigs in that wig store. Now he's got the wigs. He's a salesman. Capitalism. Hey, man. He who has the wigs controls the the, the town. I guess. Is that is that how it goes? <laughs> no, I think. Uh, yeah, I think I, it's I, I think it's gingham I, fabric and rock candy as well. Those three things. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> um, the Queen of England said that. Yeah, she did. The Queen of England said that. She did. Um, so what, what happened to you as, as a like as a white dude in the streets? I, I had to uh, like I would have to imagine that people threaten to kill you personally for being white. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. I mean, sometimes you get some. Hey, boy, boy, what are you doing over here? Stop looking at me. Go over there. And people throw rocks every now and then. Uh, Outside of that, I mean, I literally had such an adrenaline high, I didn't give a shit. I probably could have got stabbed and shot and would have giggled. Like, to me, it was fun. I'm, but I'm pretty fucking retarded anyways like that. Like, you know, you start shooting shit off or whatever and things are going crazy. That's kind of when I'm the happiest. It's like eating acid and mushrooms and doing a shit ton of coke. Like, I'm right in a good spot. Yeah. You, Not that I've ever done that before. Me I, either. I, I read about it on YouTube. No, of yeah. course. Of course. Uh, there's a reason you and Dan are really good friends. Uh, let me ask you about this. Uh, b- before your Facebook got taken down on August 6th, uh, was it true that, that you told people that your house was protected like a Gitmo torture chamber? Fuck yeah. He said, <laughs> he said that earlier on the show today. Did, did you yeah. miss that? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I said, yeah, my house... So I actually called a bunch of my veteran buddies and I, I had people doing patrols and drive bys when I was gone because I saw on the internet, um, on Twitter, I'd already been banned by Twitter then. And then an FBI guy contacted me and sent me something. Uh, but it was a screenshot and it was like, oh yeah, that's right. Joe Biggs won't be in his house on August 17th. He'll be in Portland. It's a great time to go burn that motherfucker down. Well, I just bought this house, paid cash, and I'm not going to let someone burn down my fucking kid's house. So I had that shit set up. It was like an adult home alone, you know, thing. I had fucking trap shit set up. I had vests everywhere for my buddies, guns, ammo and shit. It was awesome. You know, uh, a table for waterboarding if need be. And I told him, I put in there, I was like, keep him alive until I get back. And that's when the funnels start. So it made it, it. It made it in some magazine, like the five facts of Bigs on some shit. What was that? Yeah, did you, Enrique did, Heavy? 
Is it heavy? Yeah. Oh, heavy.com? Uh, yeah, I know that's yeah. right. Um, so, so what, did they dox you and they posted your address? Well, they said that they knew where I lived. Okay. And then I then I quickly believed, the, the day before I left, I realized that was horse shit. And I know that because I get a call from my mom and she's going, why is the FBI looking for you? And I was like, oh, don't worry about it. She goes, Joe, the FBI doesn't come by unless they're, you know, there's something going on. I said, mom, I said, if the FBI was looking for me, I would already be in FBI custody. Uh, but apparently they couldn't find my house because I did my job and I hit the uh, address for well, they're well. required. So I felt a little bit better. If they find what they believe is a credible threat towards your property or person, they're required to notify you. Even if it's yes. classified and part of an ongoing investigation, they have to let you know. Really? I didn't yeah. know so that. They, yeah, so they, uh, so they, they ended up finding me through the people we sold my mom's house to. Um, so the, the new family living there, which is a, a heart surgeon and their little family, have the FBI come, you know, knock on their door and ask him where Joe Biggs is. And they find out that's the previous owner. Then they call my mom. And then <laughs> I'm just now getting into Orlando with uh, the president of the Proud Boys, Enrico Tario. And we're about to fly out. And this FBI guy from Jacksonville goes, hey, uh, Joe Biggs. Go, yeah. He goes, yeah, we're looking for you. Where you at? He goes, I'm at the airport. I'm going to go to Portland. He goes, oh, cool. He goes, do you mind if we send someone to the airport from Portland to, to talk to you? And I go, yeah, sure. And I go, you guys worried about anything I posted? Because I was saying some pretty fucked up shit. Like, I was posting memes like Death to Antifa. And I have a shirt that says Kill Antifa. Or was it Death to Antifa? Yes, Death to Antifa. And I'm just fucking around. It's a damn T-shirt, you know, take a joke. Um, but, you know, some people thought that I was doing legitimate threats, and the FBI goes, yeah, we're not worried about you. It's like, there's actual legitimate threats against you. Um, so when we got to the airport and landed, <laughs> this guy comes up to me. He's like in a, you know, like a nerdy suit type thing, these two guys, and he comes over to put his hand out. And I thought he wanted to take a picture because he knew the fuck I was, and then he throws out the FBI badge and uh, takes us through the airport and into a secret little Homeland Security building off of the back through all these doors, and we had to have a meeting for like 45 minutes. Well, and what was the what do they say in that meeting? What happened? They wanted to know what our intentions were. They wanted to make sure that we weren't coming down and bringing an army of people and having a bloodbath. Um, you know that we weren't going to go around you know with baseball bats and guns and start beating the shit out of these guys. And I was like, look, I can tell you, like we're trolling these people. Yeah, I don't like them. I wish they'd all fucking die because I think they're losers. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to go out there and, and do something like that because a I understand that there's a law kind of saying that all that shit's bad, so I know I'm going to go to jail and never see my kid again. So I'm kind of smart enough to not go and do that. But I do want to get them pissed off enough to where they act like idiots and they go to jail. And it worked out. So all of this is for just a, like a, an, a troll, the entire thing. Well, I mean, it, but it's a troll, but it's also an effective troll. It's a Jedi mind trick. It's a psyop. We're fucking with them. Yeah, I'm smarter than them, and I can get them to do things. And then they, in essence, get thrown in jail. And that, and what's your overall goal with all of this? To to end Antifa altogether, or just to expose well, them on a national level of, of what's going on in these cities during these protests? Well, we need anti-masking laws um, in areas where that is going on. You don't have an Antifa presence. Um, these individuals put these masks on so they can cover their faces, so they can evade uh, prosecution and arrest and things like that. So, you know, my hope is that as we continue to do these uh, in domestic terrorism uh, events around the country, and we will, um, that... It wakes up some of these mayors where Antifa is very prevalent, like uh, Mayor Marty Walsh in Boston, who we're coming for next, uh, Ted Wheeler in Portland, um, and then Philadelphia, where, you know, we, there's a large stronghold. We are going to continue to do this until they do this shit or more of these guys get locked up and some of these kids go, I don't want to be a part of that. I won't go to jail. I have a life to live. So speaking of Boston, were you at the straight pride parade? Because I heard that was a Proud Boys event. Uh, nope. Uh, this was an, an event from other people. Oh, anyway, so it was, that wasn't the Proud Boys? No, I, and me and Enrique, who's over here right now, the president of the Proud Boys, him and I were the cover of uh, Yahoo that day and other places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah. That, we were, saying that we were in uh, uh, Boston that day for this event. I was like, I'm in fucking Daytona Beach right now at a biker bar getting shithoused. <laughs> so that, that, to, for, to set the record straight, that had nothing to do with the Proud Boys, the straight pride parade. That didn't have anything to do with the Proud Boys, was it? What? That uh, Boston thing? Uh, yeah, we had a couple of guys over there. Well, there was a, yeah, but we didn't put that event we on. Didn't put that okay, yeah, we didn't put the event on, but there were a couple guys that were there. Okay, cool, because that, that's the way it was painted in the media. Here's, here's what I notice. Uh, Fake news. Like, yeah. Street Pride is a troll. 
Yeah, it's yeah. a troll. The the Pinochet shirt that the Proud Boys made back in the day. Mm -hmm. It's a troll. It's making fun of the Che Guevara shirt. Che Guevara was a piece of shit. He like murdered the fuck out of people all over the place and lefties run around with that shirt on all the time. Like, oh, I'm fucking woke, bro. Yeah. And they made a Pinochet shirt to make fun of that. And they're <laughs> like, oh, they're fuck. They they want to kill lefties. Like, no, they don't, dude. It's fucking they're trolling people. You <laughs> stupid fuck. Yeah, I, I've got a shirt that says "Make Rotary Aircraft Great Again," <laughs> or it says it says "Make uh, Make Commies Afraid of Rotary Aircraft yeah. Again." I think that was it. Throwing people out of helicopters. Right? Yeah, that's it's so P cool. Pinochet was known for that. <laughs> Actually, I think Evans animated on a, a couple of times that his only regret from his military and agency services, he never got to throw somebody out of a helicopter. Ah, uh, that's everybody's regret, though, right? Well, you want to murder somebody bad. Yeah, just military, non-military. That's I don't everybody's really... regret in this life of throwing somebody out of a helicopter. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. You know? Life's short. Play it, hard. It really is. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, Joe, we got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air, so we'll get to them real quick. If you don't mind, if you wouldn't mind us, Joe, if you'd indulge us, uh, do you sleep on a ghost bed? Um, no, never, uh, never done it. Finest mattress in the land. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is where you can get the best mattress on the planet. And they've got, they've got amazing pillows as well. Those ghost so pillows. So better than a cot? Oh, way better than a cot, my man. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is the, the, the new world. If you're asking if I would protest over something, it would be this. If I lost my ghost bed, I'd fucking oh, yeah. riot. Yeah. I would burn down the goddamn place. Yeah. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros as always has 15% off for anybody who's military or a first responder mm -hmm. in this world. Uh, you get 15% off all their products, sheets, uh, adjustable bases, mattresses, pillows, and they're, they're dude, they have a 36 month, uh, no interest pay as you go program. That is the finest. Look, I don't even know if anybody does that, right? I don't think so. Look, if you're going to spend a thousand bucks on a base, a mattress, and some pillows, you can take three years to pay it off without any interest. That's not a bad deal. That's a fine deal. Yeah. Some say it's the finest deal you can get. One of the finest. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today for that. And then last but not least, we got blackriflecoffee.com. D'Anthony, why don't you tell us about it? Black Rifle Coffee is uh, its a company that sells coffee. Yeah, veterans. 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 It's very good. Actually, they just came out with the uh, Flying Elk. Have you seen that? I did, that T-shirt. They get a bunch of new T-shirts. No, it's not just the T-shirt. So it's a Costa Rican single origin special blend that's only available to coffee club members. So, really? Uh, what you could do, if you're a coffee club member, you can add it to your subscription or you can replace your upcoming subscription with just that. Or if you're not a coffee club member yet, you can join uh, just for that. So just for the, they're gonna have no a, shit. They're gonna have a string of single origin coffees that come out uh, that are like very high end, very high end. This yeah. one, this one is an 86 and a half grade out of 100, I think, which is fucking crazy for coffee. No uh, shit. Super dope. They've also got the best heat. All their new T-shirt designs are great. Yeah, and they just open, opened up a uh, shop in Bernie, Texas. Yeah, this weekend. Yeah. So head on out there as yeah. well. And by the way, the, the expressvpn.com forward slash stringer bros, that is real. Oh, um, yeah. They are our sponsor, yep. and uh, they're, they're on for the rest of the year, actually. Yeah. Um, protect your shit or beat firewalls, man. Uh, it's the only way to do it was with a, a VPN. Protect your digital butthole and then go places you're not supposed to. Those are two of my favorite things to do. Same. Same. Booty uh, trap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Booty trap. We'll talk about booty trap in a second. Uh, ExpressVPN.com uh, forward slash drinking bros. Seven bucks a month. If you sign up for the year, you get three for free. It runs seamlessly in the background of every computer available and your phones and iPads. Uh, Joe, let's, let's, uh, let's get into where you are now. You're in Miami, Florida. Is this a permanent thing? Or are, you, are you traveling for a gig right now? Yeah, I'm usually gone. I live in Slaytona, uh, or Gaytona. Place sucks, but you know it is what it is. Um, but I'm down in Miami. I'm usually gone Thursdays through Sundays, or Thursdays through Mondays to travel and do rallies and stuff like that. So yeah, we just had what's called a demand free speech uh, event. Uh, we have panels, we have discussions, and then we have big debates between people. We had this guy who's considered far right, uh, alt right in a sense, um, and then we had another guy who's considered like a uh, neocon, rhino, pro-war kind of guy, and he's Jewish. Uh, and the other guy is kind of anti-Israel. So those two guys debated, and then we had these two women from different backgrounds debate on what conservatism is and what the role of a woman should be and shouldn't be. Wow. What the role of a woman should be. What does that mean? Well, I mean, think about, like, so if you look at Islam and things like that, you know, to basically be a servant, you know, you've got to cover your body, do all this stuff, you can't drive, you don't have all these freedoms. 
Um, so there's well, that's you know, not obviously limited to different Islam. cultures. I mean, most... Yeah, I know, but I'm saying I'm just using that as an example. But yeah, yeah. different cultures have different views of what the role of a woman is, right. and then within each of those cultures, you know, within conservatism, even like, think about that. There's people who mm-hmm. think conservatism are a number of things. You know, so there was a debate on that first conservatism, and then the role of a woman in that as well. Well, at least you had uh, women on stage debating that, and not two white dudes, which is typical for politicians. You'll yeah. see, well, actually, you'll, you'll they see, like, identified as women. They were both Ted and uh, you know, you know, someone else, but they just had wigs on. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Say again. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna stop you right there. You wanna? That, that's the second wig comment you've made. Yeah, he's really into wigs. Show. Uh, no, I think that's funny. It's it's it always boils down to culture uh-huh. and not religion, for the most part. Yeah. Like if you read the the fucking Bible, it says the same shit about women obey your husbands and all that horse shit. Okay. But you know, Western people don't put up with that. They're like, no, nah, get fucked. I'm gonna do what I want. Yeah. Motherfucker. Yeah. I'm gonna go suck dicks and do cocaine. You can't stop me. Uh, it's white girl wasted summer, whatever the fuck. And yeah, hot girl summer. Hot girl summer. Now it's now sad it's boy fall. Sad boy fall. Yeah. So, uh, but it's the cultural stuff. Like the, I don't think American Muslims really do much of that. Well, the ones that are fobs, fresh off the boat, do. Okay. But I have a lot of friends that are from Muslim families, and they're just like, I don't give a shit about any of this anymore. It's like Jews, like Israeli Jews. They don't give a fuck about religion anymore. They're just like, well, yeah, we're, I we're, mean, we're Israelis about, I mean, before we're Jews, right? I mean, there's people who say they're Christian, but, I mean, they're out there, you know, doing scandals, fucked up shit all day. And then there's Christians who actually, you know, sit at home and, you know, you know, watch fucking Friends all day, you know? Yeah, which, look, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no, and nothing, wrong nothing, more Christ- strong there's Rachel. nothing more Christian than yeah. watching a good sitcom. That's a very Ross thing to do. <laughs> baking baking Pivot. cakes and shit like that, and making like homemade frostings, and then just watching the friends and everything's They're all giggling, you know, and making love like missionary. They don't do anal. No, I, wow. I'm, in, I'm into anal, so. Yeah, everybody gotta, is. Got to pass on that one. Everybody is. Let's get into the Proud Boys here. Uh, why don't you tell us what's true and what's not true about the Proud Boys? Because uh, I've heard I will do my best. If I have to, I'll revert to the president. Yeah. Uh, is he sitting across from you? Yeah. That's funny. Um, do you <laughs> do you guys hate Muslims? That's first and foremost. Uh, no, I don't hate anybody. I disagree with them. Okay. So you, you disagree with Muslims, but that's not mandatory to get into the to be a member of the Proud Boys. Okay. No. Uh, you refuse to masturbate. I, um, I know Joe. He doesn't refuse to master, but he's probably. Yeah, well, well, let me see both your hands right now. Yeah, they're pretty fucked up. No, I was just, <laughs> just making sure it wasn't one wasn't under the table as we're speaking. Is that is that real? Because you kind of paused on that. You guys refuse to master. Oh well, yeah, yeah. That's one of their things. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is one of those things. So, yeah. as a proud boy member, you don't masturbate. Uh, I'm I'm a rule breaker, so you know I gotta do my own thing. And, and the president of the Proud Boys is sitting across from you. What's his What's his theory on this? Uh, ask Ask him why Why no masturbation? Hey, so, hey, hey, they want, oh, that because all right. One of the things that they are against is they believe that that should be safe for you know with a woman. Like you shouldn't be doing all that shit because it'll affect you down the road. A lot of people who are chronic uh, do that have the uh, you know sometimes it affects them. Uh, when they're with a chick. I think that's one of the kind of the main reasons behind that is that you should be saving that for that, you know, to bust one in there to have a family. That's fucking oh, stupid. Oh, man. That's, that, that's a lot. Cause that's look, dumb. You're gonna, you're, that's practice, brother. It's going to be a two-pump Johnny No Quiver in that Yeah, stitch. you don't like, fucking uh, go to the gym and shoot hoots by yourself sometime before a game? Yeah. <laughs> you got to practice before you play. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, man, I pounded off three times this morning. Yeah. I, that's, that, that would be way out I'm of the question I'm never going to stop. Me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to go <laughs> in there too loaded. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, know, no, like that's, that's, uh, like, there's something about twins. Mary theology. Right yeah. There, yeah. Yeah. You, you've, yeah. uh, you've got to, you got to, you got to crank one out. Something, man, before you get going. There. Yeah. That's, that's too much. It's, it's too much. That's too much. Okay. Uh, is it mandatory that you have to be in a fight, a fist fight with another man, a stranger to get into the Proud Boys? Um, it's more of like doing something that stands up for Western civilization. Like, I mean, it could, it could be like, uh, you know, a badass debate that's seen like on a video or like some kind of viral thing. Um, I mean, yeah, if you, if that happens, I mean, in, you know, what is that? What's the actual rule in that? The yeah, whole, you, you don't have to the, pick the, the a, skirmish have to fight, fight thing? with a stranger on the street or anything. 
What is it? You, you got to get into it. They're asking, like, do you have to get into a fight to be a proud boy? You have to get into a fist no, fight. No, it's our fourth degree. Well, well, I mean, but the, what's the actual thing so I can tell them so I don't fuck it up because I'm stuck with rules? So, so your fourth degree is a hardship. So, it so a hardship. It could be a fight. Could be a fight. Like, I got it because I went to Texas for five days during the hurricane. Oh, yeah. So he did, it's a hardship. It's doing something for your country, for Western civilization. So... He got his fourth degree basically by going to uh, Houston mm-hmm. uh, to do relief work when Hurricane was it Andrew? No, no, not Andrew. What Andrew? What is it? Uh, Harvey. Harvey. Harvey hit, and there was mm-hmm. all the flooding. They yeah, they Houston. went out. Yeah. They they went out and rented boats. They were doing uh, pulling people from homes, um, uh, uh, pulling security and things like that. So that's one of them. So it's kind of like uh, the one of the five pillars of Islam, then. Yeah, I guess. So you guys hate him, but you stole that from him. That's, oof, come on now. Who okay. said we hated him? We said we just don't. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, I mean, look, it, I'm, I'm, I'm reading off of what's online, obviously, because we've heard a lot about the Proud Boys. There's been a lot of press on the Proud Boys. Uh, you don't hate gay people. No. Nah. Okay. So uh, is there any I mean, cur- current gay members of Proud Boys? Yeah. Oh, there is. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they can't masturbate as well, right? Oh, it might be different for them. Well, if it, can two gay dudes jerk each other off? Because that would be that seems like a I, yeah, reasonable. Yeah, that seems like I mean, a reasonable I mean, thing. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, can they? Yeah, I mean, are they supposed to? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm sure they do. Are they supposed to? This, I mean, I, this is America. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Well, there you <laughs> if you want to jerk off a gay dude in America, and eat a taco. You can, do that. you can eat a taco while eating with one a taco, hand. and then eat have that helmet with the beer thing in it, and you're drinking it. Yeah, so you can eat a taco, drink a beer, and jerk off two dudes at the same... Well, one dude. You only got one hand left. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're a gay guy and it's your date, right? Obviously, it's going to end in a jerk sesh. So. I hope so. Or, you know, a mutual masturbation thing where you look at each other and make eye contact and then well, I, I, go from there. To, I was just saying to... Sub- I think once to another person's rule, involved, it's yeah, kind of different. To subvert the rule, though, you jerk each other off. Okay. All right. I, look, I'm, I'm trying to get the rules done. I want to know yeah. what's going on here because there's, there's a lot online where you're just like... Man, I don't know what's right and what's wrong. So we got one of the guys on here. Let's let's fucking ask him about it. Uh, you don't ha- you don't have to be just white. No. Yeah. Okay. So you have ra- like everybody of all races inside Proud Boys. Yeah. And is there any is there any kind of uh, coordinated effort on your part to reach out to people of other races that are also pro West? Like, how does that work? Just out of curiosity. Uh, they, they reach out to us when they see videos of us knocking out Antifa, when they see videos of us getting Antifa thrown in jail, when they see videos of us out partying, when they read articles saying that uh, the, the Proud Boys are, uh, uh, you know, throw sex parties with cocaine. I mean, the recruiting kind of does itself. I mean, we're pretty awesome. So you do that? You throw sex parties with cocaine? I mean, that's what the article says. I can't confirm or deny. Wow. So is that, is that more of a kind so you're, of a... You're basically Miami University in the late 90s. Yeah. <laughs> so the sex party, is, is that to get people in there? That's to get people in the group? Like you throw sex parties with Coke? No, it's, it's like it, the guy who wrote it, he just likes to try to... He always tries to make us look bad. And he, he comes up with these like elaborate... His name's Will Summer from the Daily Beast. And he'll write these, like, what he thinks are bad headlines, but really, they sound fucking wicked awesome. Like, who doesn't want to go to a sex party with cocaine, you know? So it's like, we read these articles, we're like, oh, you got a hit piece. I was like, that's not a hit piece. That's going to help boost recruiting numbers. And sure enough, it's like, boom, 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 boom. Hey, we want to join. What's it like? This is awesome. This sounds fun. Okay. Uh, Proud Boys started off as uh, as a joke using the song Proud of Your Boy from Disney's Aladdin musical. Is that real? Yeah. It is. Look, have you? Yes. Uh, you've listened to Gavin McInnes, right? He's a giant. I have. You, he's a giant troll. You see that guy right there? He's yeah, yeah, a yeah, giant yeah. fucking troll. No, I, I understand, but for the audience, because again, you hear the term "proud boys," you you hear that they've been labeled as terrorists. Yeah. I think it would shock a lot of people to know that it was actually formed out of a joke uh, from a Disney Aladdin musical. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, you know how many times? You know how many times I get fucking like. Everybody knows this whole thing, right? They, they're saying it was just ADL called it uh, a symbol of hate now, the OK sign. Oh, I mean, yeah. even Apple knows. When you type in OK, the, you know, the letter O and the K, the first emoji that comes up, even from Apple's iPhone, is this. Yeah. Right. I mean, even they know. Even they know that's what that fucking means. But it started on like 4chan as a troll to fuck around like, oh, this is going to be our new you know, inside. Like if you flash this, you know, you're with us. 
You know, and, and I still get calls from reporters like, we've seen photos of you, Joe, in Portland and other places where you're flashing a symbol of hate. Um, are you a hateful man? And I'm just like, I'll just start laughing. I'm like, lady, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> so, because and you can you can dispel that rumor, right? That like that was all a four chan thing. This this whole yeah. okay thing and all that other shit. Like it was totally fake, right? And you guys ran with this. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking funny. Man, I mean, there's divers that do it. Like I saw, I was at a fucking Vegas the other day, you know. And there's if you go to the what is it MGM or whatever, they have the shark expo thing where all these little sharks are running around. And there was divers in there with them. They're doing this shit. Like, are they hateful people? You know, no. They're just fucking communicating. They only it's like, a gesture. They only like great white sharks. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Nailed it. Racist. Exactly. Uh, all right. The basic tenet of the group is that you are Western chauvinists who refuse to apologize for creating the modern world. Yes. So that's true. Yes. Okay. Uh, and when you're saying chauvinist, obviously, you're, you're talking about men. There, there is no women allowed in the group, correct? Yes, it's a male group. Okay, so it's just a male group and a male group What's only. the What's the purpose of that, if you don't mind me axing? Just brevity. I mean, just to have the boys to get away sometimes, uh, to shoot the shit. You know, you can be around women way too long. The same one if you're married. You know, you kind of want to rip your fucking eyeballs out every now and then. Sometimes you just need to sit around with the boys, drink some beer. I mean, this is a drinking group, you know. So there's, there's, there's some guys that drink, and there's some guys who are more involved in the activism side. You know, Some of the guys that only want to party, those guys party, and then the other guys, we go out and you know, run around in the streets and you know, bring awareness to shit. Okay. Uh, is there four levels of Proud Boy membership? Yes. I heard him talking about a level. Uh, what are those four levels? First, second, third, and fourth degree. Okay. And, and the first is, let's see, you have to declare yourself to be a Proud Boy. It means uh, to make your Western chauvinism public, and, and you don't care who knows it. Yep. Okay, so that, that's, that's the one. Uh, yep. So you can confirm that. Yes. Okay. Second level. I feel like I'm one of those dispositions or whatever. <laughs> no, well, look, again, I wouldn't dispel any of the, the, the rumors out there. Like, we haven't had anybody from the Proud Boys on the show. We tried no, to get- I'm saying, but aren't you, but aren't you reading from the actual website? Yes, uh, but I don't know if it's yours or not because the way everybody's been banned or if somebody's changed it, you know, to whether it's like a uh, Wikipedia okay. or you, you know what I'm saying that I'm reading off yeah. of. Like, gotcha. uh, I'm always fascinated and curious as to whether or not any of this is true. We Again, we tried to get Gavin on, but uh, he was going through some things at the time. Uh, the second level is the swearing off of masturbation, which we talked about. You said that was real. Um, what are the third and fourth levels? Because the, the fourth level says it's, it's the newest one. Um, explain that to me. So you've got, you know, I'm a proud boy. I'm not going to shame for creating the modern world. Uh, you have to get punched uh, uh, while naming five breakfast cereals by a large group of people. We just did that to some guy. It's just funny, you know. We'll go in the back of some alleyway and people are like, they're, they're beating someone up. And it's just a joke. Who gives a shit? It's funny to listen to someone get punched, uh, you know, while they're screaming out like corn pops and fucking frosted flakes. It's just hilarious. I mean, like everyone's <laughs> laughing and having a good time. It's like, they're like, these guys are so hateful. It's like Kellogg's. <sighs> like when I did it, all I could think about was Cheerios. I got punched for 30 minutes. It was horrible. That's fucking crazy, man. Because <laughs> I, I don't fucking eat cereal. <laughs> I'm a grown ass man. So what? what oh, no, where oh, are they? Where, cereal is for everybody. It's okay? for everybody. Yeah, cereal is for everybody. Uh, I don't eat it though. I'm with you on that one, Joe. Uh, but it is for everyone. Uh, and then you got to get a tattoo. And then there's the the then the one that we talked about where you have to go out and actually do something. So that could be a fire. That could go out. That could be going out and, uh, you know, helping people and doing something, you know, for your country. So when they're punching you, are they, what, are they just punching you in the face? Is this because it, it sounds no, a lot like Fight it's, Club. It's like from the waist up and like from here down to shoulder down. OK, so you're, you're getting punched from shoulder to, to just above the dick then, essentially. Yeah, just above the dick. OK. And then how do you get them to stop punching you? You say five cereals. Yeah, five cereals. Once and, you say five cereals, it. someone's one person's one person's counting like they're sitting there going one. You know, then you got it's being filmed and, you know, then specific people get picked um, to go and, and be part of the punching. OK. How and many, we don't hold back. How many members do you guys currently have? I don't know. What, what are we up to in members? 17,000 worldwide. Huh? 17,000 worldwide. 17,000. 
worldwide? Okay, 17,000 worldwide. And then uh, who funds you? How, how do you guys get funding for this? Uh, do fundraisers, do all kinds of shit. I mean, we sell t-shirts, you know, crap like that. Off your There's website? No, like, yeah, we don't have like the Koch brothers or anything helping us out. Okay, I, I, yeah, because I didn't know like wh- whether or not, because I, I always figured, and Dan, you can tell me if, if, if I'm wrong on this. I always figured Antifa was funded by somebody like a George Soros or somebody like that. I don't know if they're funded by anybody. If you look at the way they dress and smell... It doesn't I think, look like well, there's, they there's, have any money. I think they just they they all live on the street together and shit. I honestly, I honestly think that they do have some funding, but it's not in the level that you would think. There are people that show up to these events, extremely structured. They have these very fancy signs and shit. Like ours, like look like homeless people signs. They're funny, funny but it's like on a shitty piece of cardboard. Smart. These guys have like really fancy classy signs that if you were to go get them made that costs quite a bit of money so i do think there's some funding in that sense and then you have a lot of people big names that come in that draw crowds that that say they support it that makes um other people want to get involved in local things i don't really understand a lot of it but i'm sure there's got to be a way money come in because think about whenever they hold these events they have a shit ton of people to show up and there's a lot of people that come outside of the country that's a lot of money on airfare and there's a lot of events that were going on during the election that they were doing i mean that that amount of traveling all the time means you don't have a job so that's got to essentially be your job and that money's got to come somewhere yeah because we had uh milo's bodyguard on, on the show <laughs> the day after all that shit went down at berkeley uh where he was about to see yeah, i was there oh you were yeah yeah so yep. he's he had said because he was uh drinking bro and he had said that they'd they'd gotten a heads up a few days in advance of like hey man antifa will be here shit's gonna get out of control what do you want to do do you know in advance that they're going to be there and all this stuff before you guys attend these rallies? Yeah, of course. Just like they have people that have weaseled their way in to infiltrate, we do the same. I mean, you send people off, you find out kind of the areas because they, what was it at? When I lived in Austin, Texas, they would actually meet at a public library and discuss uh, uh, future events. Um, rallies that they were going to do. Um, they would talk strategy and dealing with people like me, uh, how to deal with the cops, routes in and out, uh, the parking lots where they're going to go, parking lots where we go, how they go around and they're going to slash tires. So they're, they're, that's happening on both ends. That's pretty sophisticated, actually. I didn't think it was that, that intense. You'd be surprised. It's a lot of work for nothing. Yeah, yeah. You don't really get anything yeah, in but, return. But, but when you're that brainwashed to think that there's literally Nazis attending this rally um yeah you're gonna do it if you really believe in something these people are that passionate about a lie you know they're like i said they're fucking but, but they, they want socialism why not just go to venezuela uh, i mean there's places you can go where socialism's already going yeah on, that, right? it already because exists. that's why i said earlier they're uncultured they don't really understand they they think they want something but they don't know it's like i said there's not rafts you know people aren't like storming into venezuela to go there you know those people are trying to get here and they're like, hey, man, we got to fucking get out of America, go to Venezuela and eat rats. Like, no, it's not happening. You know, and they don't know that because they've never been. They don't see it. They think that's a lie. They think that's fake news. They think that it's this, you know, utopian over there. Yeah, it did. look, it definitely is not. No, Venezuela sucks. <laughs> yeah, I actually was going to, for a while, was thinking about sneaking in there with uh, my buddy Luke Radowski from We Are Change. Uh, go into Bogota, Colombia, and then try to cross over. But I had a buddy down there doing some contract stuff, and he says if you even get close to the board at this point, they will fucking shoot you. So we kind of quickly decided not to do that. Really? Yeah. Shit, I didn't, I didn't know how bad. I, look, you you see the news. You never yeah. know how bad. This was around the time is. when you saw that that like that armored vehicle was like rolling and hitting people. It was around that time. So back when it was like really peak fucking insane. Man. Uh, so let's hypothetical say Antifa disbands one day. What, what do you guys do then? Drink? Yeah, pretty much just drink and have parties where there's chicks and, you know, do or not do other fun things. And it's just kind of like a fraternity then. Yeah, it's a male's fraternity. It's a hangout. We're a bunch of dudes who love America and like to fucking share funny memes and shit talk and talk about chicks and have a good time and travel around and party. Okay. Uh, let's talk. Hey, let's talk about the website that you're on right now. So it's you, Gavin McGinnis, and then Milo. You said, yeah, Milo, Soph, that little woke chick. Uh, uh, we're gonna have some other people are be coming up uh, soon. Ann Coulter's been on there, and, and you have a regular show on there with the rest of these guys. Yep. 
Uh, what, what, what day of the week are you on typically? That one's on Sundays right now, starting off. It's just called Bigs. Okay. Um, so that drops every Sunday. And then I also will be filming events and going around uh, doing live stuff like that as well. So that content will be on there right now. I have like three or four videos up since I started about a week ago. Gotcha. And is this serving as kind of a uh, like a vet TV type of thing where you guys are you're, you're trying to be your own you know TV network like Infowars or uh, what's the, yeah, what's the structure of it? It's a subscription base, so like ten dollars a month or ninety nine for a year, um, and you pay for that content. You know, it's content of people. So if you're into the the people who got banned, you know, it's kind of an enticing thing to go wait. Well, you know, why have these people been banned? Why are they not allowed to speak and have an opinion publicly? I kind of want to go find out what that is. So, you know, that's kind of been a good draw for that. Um, so most of the people on our network are people who have been overall banned at some point. Gotcha. Is Milo banned from everything? Uh, for the most part, I believe he's banned on quite a bit of stuff. Yeah. Uh, from Facebook and all that stuff? Is Milo banned from Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yep. Man. Uh, that's like crazy. they took down most of my YouTube videos, like all my, you know, life's work or whatever, like all the shit I did with Infowars. Like I'm not a conspiratorial guy. Like I did the ground coverage at events. You know, I'm the guy that went when something happened, like when the Bataclan Theater t uh, attack happened. I was out there for the Paris attacks. I went on the raids in Saint Denis with French police. I went out there to Molenbeek, Belgium, when they were actually looking for the ISIS uh, attackers, where they came from, the apartment complex. I went out there for all that, you know. So I did all that stuff, filmed it, had awesome videos, and then YouTube shut down that and stole all that from me i'll never get it back which is pretty fucked up so you didn't you didn't save a copy for yourself of any of that stuff no because i'm an idiot i should have thought about that were you going live is that why yeah, yeah. uh with that with that that's uh the paris attacks that you were just talking about how bad was it on the inside because i heard some really fucked up shit afterwards and i don't know if it's true or not i cannot tell you i didn't get a chance to go inside they would not let me get that close okay uh, what kind of access do you have uh, typically when you go to these events? Are you pretty much man on the street type stuff where you're following and, and you know, kind of reporting live is right behind the police? There's there's a journalist and then there's a journalist, you know, or there's a journalist and there's a reporter. There's people who sit there like most uh, reporters like Fox, CNN, all these assholes. They sit there and they go to these events and they're like, all right. Back to you, Bob. We're live in Paris, you know, and they, they read a script that someone in Washington who's not there tells them to say. Then they take a printout from the police who obviously have a narrative to spin because they don't want to look bad or look like fuck-ups, and they read that narrative. Um, I actually go out and go beyond the do-not-cross police tape because I don't give a shit. Um, I can run, and if you can catch me, then you deserve to arrest me. Um, but I'll go and actually go into these areas in other countries, I don't care, sneak around and get the shots and find the stuff that other people are afraid to do. Like, I actually think that what I'm doing is actual journalism. I'm not going to sit there behind some, you know, fucking police barrier and let you tell me what happened. I actually want to go see what it was so someone that saw it can actually hear what actually happened. And who, who funds you to go to Paris and things like that? Because that's, that's, that's not a cheap flight, obviously. Well, that was when I was at InfoWars, so, you know. Oh, so they, they paid for it. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Like, uh, if I see something, I give Alex, I call him, I go, hey, man, this is a big story, potentially. Like, the, the Ferguson thing, I, I had this gut feeling. I said, this is going to pop off and be really big for a while. I was like, we should definitely check it out. Um, so we went out there, and boy, boy, was it, you know, good. You know, there's been some things I've had a, a feeling about that wasn't quite um, as, you know, extravagant and awesome, you know, to see and, you know, sensational, you know. But you know, it is what it is. You know, you try to pitch something and hopefully he likes it. And it's the same thing with Gavin. I have to pitch things. And if he thinks it's something, then we'll pay for it, you know? Gotcha. Okay. And, and they'll send you out to all that stuff. Since you have uh, your own show and shit now, uh, and I know you actually know personally some of the Antifa leadership. Yes. I, I I've would, been sued by them. I would want to see both of you, on, like, on camera at the same time having a discussion about your differing viewpoints. I think that would be really interesting. See, that's the thing, that though. So when we were in D.C., we had a demand free speech event there. We actually had Daryl Lamont Jenkins walk over yeah. um, from the Antifa side. He is one of the most prominent, uh, you know, leadership uh, guys there is within Antifa. Um, he's got quite a few documentaries on Netflix, surprisingly. Um, and we let him come over to our side. Not one of the Proud Boys touched him. Not one of us punched him or assaulted him. And uh, Enrique over here asked him, he goes, hey, can you escort me to the Antifa side? Uh, and let's have a discussion. He goes, I can't guarantee your safety. You know, so these this mob mentality that's on this side right now, they won't 
communicate. They won't open up a dialogue. Um, it's just bang on drums, scream, or become violent. Um, so we haven't gotten to a point where they're willing to be, uh, you know, an adult and actually have a discussion. What about him personally? We're working though? on it. Like, I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to be in a crowd of those folks, but like if you if you were to record something and put it up on your respective websites, that would be super. I think that would be really interesting to see. Like two, I think because there's there's. As fucked up as Antifa is, there's going to be semi reasonable people on both sides that yeah, articulate course. their viewpoints, and I would want to hear what somebody with some fucking sense on that side has to say because it all seems crazy to me. Yeah. yeah, I think with I think it's a good idea. I mean, I think that's really good, and I think Daryl could possibly be one that would be more talkative and open to that. But there is there's no like central like you know with the Proud Boys we have. You know, a chairman, and then we have these, you know, a group of guys that are part of the, you know, leaderships called elders. And, you know, all this stuff is kind of dispersed around the country, you know, and all that stuff. But Antifa in Philadelphia doesn't like Antifa in Portland. And the Portland Antifa don't like the ones in Berkeley. The ones in Berkeley don't like the ones in Manhattan or anything like that. There's no, like, one guy kind of going, hey, this is how we do all this. So each group is different in a sense. Some might be more talkative of the others, and some other ones just might be extremely violent and just want to fucking kill you. Well, if any Antifa people are listening out there, uh, I would love to have you on our show to talk about that shit if you're a reasonable human being and you can discuss that shit. And the second thing is, just from a insurgency standpoint, the way you win is to be reasonable and communicate your actual viewpoints and not just be an asshole. That's how, that's how, like, if you, if you actually have goals that you're trying to achieve, that's how you do it. You just don't show up, oh, I'm going to fucking punch Nazis. Well, what's a Nazi? Fucking white, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, I, we, we'd love to have the, the head of Antifa on the show. Yeah, it'd be great. Just to have a conversation. Um, or the heads, if there's, like, I would, we'll, we'll have all of them on. I just want to hear it really what they really here. Yeah, there's like a different guy. Like the day before, or the morning of the Portland rally it was funny. I always Google myself when I do these events because I'm a narcissistic asshole and I like seeing the headlines. It's pretty funny. But one of them, the first one on Google that morning was uh, Joe Biggs sued by, what was that guy's name in Portland? The head of the Antifa there? Uh, the one that slobbers all the time. He looks like a fucking ass clown. Uh, Either way, this guy. Uh, files his suit and tries to get a restraining order. Get me, it, like this, this big bad guy who always acts like he's going to go around is so scared and triggered by me. Luis Marquez. That's his okay. name. Luis Marquez. Luis Marquez. He says that I, yeah, he says that I, uh, fit, or I, uh, I on social media, which is bullshit because I'm fucking banned. Um, says that I made threats that I was going to go after him and all this shit. But he took just pictures of me saying death to Antifa, not actually. You know, zeroing in on one person and try to use that as a way to uh, file a lawsuit against me. And it was against myself and uh, another individual, this chick who's a female UFC fighter. Wow. And what was the end result of that, that case? Uh, the, the, the judge threw it out because there was no direct threat. Like, I never specifically named him. I'd actually never even heard of his fucking name until that day when I read the, the, the paperwork. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, look. But I mean, it just shows you they're pains, little bitches. Fuck them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, look, man, this gets to, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or uh, helped you to get to where you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to, Joe? Pinoche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I feel like this show has been one giant troll. You might as well end it with one more. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You were a staff sergeant, right, in the military? Yeah, sadly. I don't know how that happened. Um, and, and you have two Purple Hearts. Is that real? Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, one of the other things that's real, I never once did a board in my entire life. I never did a practice board. I never did a promotion board. None of that shit. The first time I got promoted to sergeant, I was in Afghanistan. My first sergeant came over to me after a convoy. And uh, this is when we had those, you know, the... The Velcro. Velcro yeah. He pulls off the, the specialist and he goes, move on, Sergeant. And I was like, oh, shit. He goes, yeah, I already went. He's like, I went for you. You're good. And then, you know, fucking down the road, same thing. I get fucking pinned staff sergeant. Same thing. Came off of a mission when I was deployed and got it that way. I thought that was kind of one of the funny things throughout my career that I never actually had to do that shit. <laughs> well, man, I, look, we appreciate you being on the show. We appreciate you just clearing up some things that are going on in the world and especially with proud boys all of this was super enlightening and fascinating um the masturbation one though i don't think i can get behind nope nope 
No. No, I'm um, gonna. I'm actually gonna go jerk off eight times tonight. <laughs> because I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get a girl to give me a hand job with her mouth. Yeah, do that. You are, you still, are you still married? No. You don't say. I'm kidding. Yeah, I just. I, just <laughs> I, I think after two times, I just. I don't think I'm kind of right for that. <laughs> no, no, definitely. But not. you never know. You know what? I'm down. I believe. I'm a strong believer in third times a charm. So hey, it always is still that. That that's. Hey, ladies. Yeah, look, if Jared Taylor was on the show, he'd tell you the same thing. Oh, uh, today. man. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, Joe, thanks for being on the show, man. Uh, where can everybody try to find you on, on some form of social media? Freespeech.tv. You can go to Instagram. I'm Anticom, so A-N-T-I-C-O-M number three. And then Anticom18 on Twitter, which is a new one I was able to make the other day. And Google. Google my name. Don't believe it all, but fuck it. Some of it's funny. Yeah, man, that's why I was asking today because it, again, even with the the rules of the Proud Boys, like you don't I honestly really know thought you were going to ask anymore. me some other shit. What's that? <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, you were like, I was looking into. You. I was like, oh fuck, man, because there's some bad shit out there, some really crazy shit on Google. I was like, please don't let it be some of those things. And luckily, it was all the good stuff, so we're good. Try we we try here. We try to do some research over here, just a little bit to to remain legit. Uh, we appreciate your time today, man. Enjoy Miami. Fucking A, man. Thanks, guys. All right. Take care. For Danthony, Danthony Holloway, uh, Mr. Joe Biggs, I am Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.